look at the three people who have been shown on the board over here the first person is listening to something the second person is talking to a group of people and the third person is thinking about what he is going to have for dinner now in all these three cases we can normally say that these three are working but in terms of physics when we consider them scientifically neither this person who is listening nor this person who is talking neither the last person who is thinking can be said as doing any work in terms of physics neither of these three people is doing any sort of work now obviously listening talking thinking are certain activities which make us exhausted mentally or physically so why does physics not take them into account in physics which is basically the study of inanimate objects those things which lifeless or inanimate objects cannot do like thinking talking listening are not considered as work so now in this case you will see two instances one where a man is sliding down a plane and in the second a box sliding down a plane now as far as physics or science is concerned it only considers the fact that there are two separate bodies sliding down the plane what the moods of the person is whether he is happy or angry or sad whether he is talking to anyone while sliding down or whether he is thinking about something is not considered by physics no motivational factors on why the man is sliding down is considered so similarly for the box only the box sliding down is considered and in that way the man is also treated so in case of physics both the man and the box sliding down the plane will be treated in a similar manner so this is the reason why listening talking and thinking are not classified as work by physics why because inanimate objects cannot listen they cannot talk and most certainly they cannot think so those things which inanimate objects cannot do are not classified as work as far as physics is concerned so how does physics define work let us find out now consider a very very simple experiment over here a book is kept on a table and a boy pushes this book with a force f what do you think will happen to the book when it is being pushed it will get displaced by a certain amount similarly consider a horse which is pulling a cart of people now when the horse is pulling the cart what do you think happens the cart moves in the forward direction and thus with the help of this horse cart these people are able to go from one place to another so even in this case the cart is getting displaced so whenever force is being applied on an object whether a force is being applied on a book by the boy or force is being applied by the horse on the cart the object is moving through a certain distance or in other words we can say that it is getting displaced from its original position so we define work as follows whenever force is able to move an object we say that work is done on the object by the force notice the definition carefully that is whenever a force is being applied on an object that is the force was being applied on the book or the force was being applied on the cart so whenever the force was applied those objects were displaced and we can say that work was done on the object by the force now let us consider the two previous cases separately in the first case when the boy is pushing the book on the table he is applying a certain amount of force on the book so the force is being applied by the boy on the book and the book is moving through a certain distance and thus we can say that work is being done similarly when the horse is pulling the cart it is applying a certain amount of force on the cart due to which this cart is moving through a certain distance or it is getting displaced from its original position so again in this case we can say that work is being done because there is displacement occurring now the prime question that is who is doing the work 
and on what is the work being done. We are finding in this case that the boy is applying a force on the book and the book is moving. So who is doing the work and on what is the work being done? That is what we have to find out. So work is being done by the object that is applying the force. In the previous case of the book and the boy, who was applying the force? The boy was applying the force. So the boy is applying the force and doing work. Work is being done on the object which gets displaced. So the book was getting displaced. So work was being done on the book. So since boy is pushing the book and he's applying an amount of force on pushing it, we can say that work is being done by the boy. Similarly, when the boy pushes the book, it moves through a certain distance or it gets displaced from its original position. Thus, work is being done on the book. Thus, we can say that work is being done by the boy on the book. Now, I have a question for you. In this case, when the horse is pulling the cart, who do you think is doing the work and on what is the work being done? Let us find out. The answer is very simple. Over here, the horse is pulling the cart, so it has to apply a certain amount of force on pulling the cart. Thus, we can say that work is being done by the horse, because here, horse is applying the force. Likewise, when the horse pulls the cart, the cart gets displaced from its original position and it moves through a certain distance. Thus, we can say that work is being done on the cart. Hence, work is being done by the horse on the cart. Now, let us find out the mathematical relation for work. Work, mathematically, is defined as the product of force and displacement. Now, it is important to understand why we are considering displacement and not distance. So, let us say we have two points, A, and B. Now, according to physics, it is only interested in the shortest distance in between these two points. That is known as the displacement or the straight line joining these two points. It doesn't matter in physics whether the path followed by any object in moving from A to B is like this, a curved path or a zigzag path or any other path. Even if an object traveling from A to B were to travel through the entire screen and then reach B, it does not matter. In all the cases, the displacement remains the same. That is, the distance in between AB, the shortest distance. And that is the displacement. So the force which is being applied to displace the body from A to B, we are getting the work by multiplying that force into the concerned displacement. So work is defined as force into displacement. You will also notice that work is a scalar quantity. Why is work a scalar quantity? Because it does not have any direction associated with it. It has no direction associated with it. Work done in the forward direction or in the backward direction or work done eastwards and northwards has no significance in physics whatsoever. So it is due to this reason that work is defined as a scalar quantity and given by the product in between force and displacement. Now, it is not always necessary that force and the displacement will have to be in the same direction. In the previous cases of the boy and the book and the horse and the cart, in whichever direction the force was being applied, the object was moving in that direction only. Now, if you consider this animation, you will find that a boy is lifting up a book. Now, you know that gravity acts on all objects in the universe. So, over here, gravity is also acting on the book and gravity, as you know, acts downwards always. The gravitational force is always vertically downwards. So, gravity is also acting on this book. But you will find that this book is not moving downwards. Instead, it is being displaced in the upward direction. So we can say that even though the gravitational force is in the downward direction, 
it is not getting displaced in the downward direction but it is moving up because the boy is moving it up so it is not always necessary that the force and displacement have to be in the same direction now we know that work is equal to force into displacement as it is mathematically defined now let us find out what is the unit for work the unit for force is newton and the unit for displacement is meters so the unit for work is newton meters that is if we have a force of 1 newton causing a displacement of 1 meters the work done will be 1 newton meter now newton meter is also known by another term that is joule so the unit for work is newton meter or joule which it is commonly known by now let us see how we can define one joule of work one joule of work is the amount of work which is said to be done by a force of 1 newton so over here you can see that we have considered a force of 1 newton which displaces a body through a distance of 1 meters in this case the displacement that the force is causing is 1 meters so when a force of 1 newton is causing a displacement of 1 meters in its own direction we say that 1 joule of work is being done by the force on the body so we found out what the SI unit for work is now work can also be expressed in its CGS unit so again we consider the mathematical expression that is force into displacement now the SI unit for force was Newton the CGS unit for force is dyne likewise the SI unit for displacement was meters the CGS unit is centimeters so what can we say is the CGS unit for work it is dyne centimeter now dyne centimeter is commonly known by another name which is erg so we can say that the CGS unit of work is dyne centimeter or more commonly erg so in a similar manner we can define one erg that is when a body on which a force of one dyne is being applied is moving through a distance or getting displaced by one centimeters in the same direction in that case work of one erg is being done so now let us try to find out the relationship in between joule the SI unit of work and erg the CGS unit of work so firstly we write these two as follows one joule as we found out is one Newton into one meter and one erg is equal to one dyne into one centimeter so now let us proceed to find out the relation in between joule and erg firstly we define one Newton in terms of its CGS unit it is known that one Newton is equal to 10 to the power 5 dynes and one meters is equal to a hundred centimeters or in other words 10 to the power of 2 centimeters so if we replace these values in this particular expression in these two expressions we will be able to relate joule and erg so let us find out how we can do so we express one joule in terms of the values of dyne and centimeters which we have obtained for the corresponding values of 1 newton and 1 meters so when we replace these values in this equation we get 1 joule is equal to 1 newton which is equal to 10 to the power 5 dyne multiplied by 10 to the power of 2 centimeters which is equal to 1 meters now we get 10 to the power of 5 plus 2 dyne centimeters which is nothing but 10 to the power of 7 erg because dyne centimeter as you can see is nothing but erg thus the relation in between the SI unit of work and the CGS unit of work is given by this expression 1 joule is equal to 10 to the power of 7 erg now I have a very simple question for you the question is as you can see from the picture 
the boy is applying a force of 10 newton on this particular body and he is displacing it through 8 meters in the same direction as that of the force. So now can you tell me what is the work done by the boy on the block? Let us find out. Now we have been given two things. The first is the force being applied by the boy on the block is 10 newton. And the second thing is the displacement of the block is 8 meters. And it has also been given to us that the direction in which the force is acting, it is the same direction in which the displacement is taking place. So let us now try to proceed and find out how we can calculate the work done. Now we have studied that work done, in this case on the block by the boy, will be equal to force into displacement. So over here we have been given that the force being applied is 10 Newton and the displacement is 8 meters. So what can we say? We can say that the work being done is 80 Newton meters. 80 Newton meters is also commonly known as 80 joules. So thus we can say that the work being done by the boy on the block is equal to 80 joules, which we have obtained by multiplying force and displacement. Why? Because force and displacement are both in the same direction. And this is how we found out the work done.